So I'm very excited to share this with you. This is a perfect example of what is possible with the power of uh, amino acids and also genetics. So this is a person who I started working with, hadn't been working with that long. We'd only done the first two steps of my seven step rejuvenation blueprint, which is evaluating the genetics and starting to work on the building blocks that the person may be low in. And it's such a profound case study for a point that I often make about how amino acids, individual amino acids are often very much underestimated in terms of the power they can have. And uh, there's not much of a better example of that than this interview. So uh, with this person, please bear in mind that, uh, you know, they're not a public figure. They don't, I don't know if they've ever done a podcast before or an interview or, you know, anything like that. Um, they just volunteered to do this out of the goodness of their heart because uh, they have struggled so long with this challenge, 40-ish years, as you're going to hear. Um, I'm not being vague, you know, for uh, any reason. We're about to reveal what it was and who he is and all the rest of it. But I would like, uh, you know, him to speak for himself. But I just wanted to introduce him and, uh, you know, thank him very much for sharing his uh, story. And I encourage you to listen. It's being shared as a case study but I would say it's also an inspirational story. It's also a story about what's possible. And that's really why he wanted to do the interview. As much as, you know, it's interesting to him that, the, you know, the particular intervention strategy worked, I think the more profound point is, you know, I tell the story when I go on other people's podcasts a lot about, you know, how I struggled for years. And it was only through a, you know, very customized approach personalized to me that I managed to, to get somewhere that I had to kind of work out on my own. Well, I'd help, but you know, no one else gave it to me. Um, and you know, years is bad to be suffering with something. Uh, but Andy, who you're about to hear from suffered for four decades. And so I think it's very inspirational, you know, that he never gave up hope. Um, he always kind of, uh, uh, you know, kept trying different things. He's actually an extremely uh, I'd say like a polymath, you know, he has a, a lot of different skills and a lot of different areas. I'm sure at least some of which are developed in the course of, uh, you know, trying to resolve this issue, but it's incredible, um, you know, his commitment to not giving up and, and you know, giving in and just accepting that he, that he had to suffer and, and, and just live with it. So, uh, please hear it as both, uh, a case study or, you know, the way I probably am more likely to look at it, but also an inspirational story for you. Because if you're listening to something like this, maybe you're into peak performance, optimizing, that's fantastic. But I know a lot of you are listening because you are struggling with something chronic. Maybe it may well be something that you've had for a long time. And so, you know, be inspired. Not just that, I guess, he finally had a res resolution, but also that the resolution was so easy, so simple, so cheap, so painless, like all the things that you would want a resolution to be. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, in today's call, I'm uh, delighted to be joined by Andy, who um, is a client who said that he would be happy to do a, a video to talk about a case study because the um, improvement that he had was so remarkable and so interesting at really how easy it was after struggling for such a long time. And I think, you know, the main motivation was to inspire people to know that even if you've been struggling with something like the issues that he has been for a very long time, uh, to not give up, to have hope, and that the answers are out there. And in his case, the answers, um, you know, started with uh, looking at his genetics. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Andy, thank you so much for jo joining us. Thanks, Elwin. Yeah, good to see you today. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for suggesting this. Um, so if you don't mind, Andy, let's start with, I know you're keen to talk about all the improvements you have, but let's start with uh, just telling people like the main challenges that you were uh, suffering with that, you know, led you to be interested in um, testing your genes and then doing consult with me. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the main driver for me, which has been the driver for 40 years, is has been chronic anxiety. And it's it's generalized anxiety and it gets kind of mapped out there onto a lot of different things so uh, there was traumas in childhood and uh my my hope was that in doing lots of therapy that the therapy would resolve that anxiety eventually 
Uh, it didn't. It gave me lots of awareness and lots of insights and grew to know myself extremely well. Um, from the sort of therapy, that sort of leads on into different sort of other sort of explorations in my life of trying all different retreats and all different sort of yoga therapies and psychedelics and um, acupuncture. And I mean, it's, it's been endless over 40 years. Um, and what I've generally sort of found with all the different sort of treatments that I've done is that I get a sort of feeling of initial improvement in that. But then the anxiety would just gradually creep back in. And it felt like my central nervous system was kind of just running on this fight or flight mechanism all the time. And nothing would really sort of calm it down to any sort of permanent degree. Um, and it's, it's always felt to me like there's something missing, like someone either hasn't said the right thing or someone hasn't done the right thing with me or I haven't allowed certain experiences or advice to come in. Um, but then gradually over the years, I just I started to think, well, maybe there's just more to this. Um, luckily, I stumbled across one of your videos um, interviewing someone and going through their genetic test that you had done with them and analysing the results. Something just clicked for me in that and thought, well, maybe there is something biologically going on that, that needs looking at. So, yes, yeah, sorry, you were going to say something, Alvin. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, maybe there's something biologically going on is a key understanding. And I'm kind of surprised, but not really, to notice that there's quite a few clients like yourself where the biggest shifts they're actually having are not in like the obvious health issues like, you know, digestion or immunity or whatever. Uh, the biggest shift is actually in how they feel in their emotional state, which you wouldn't think is, you know, a purely physical issue because I'm not giving you any therapy, as you said, or anything like it. Um, I'm suggesting purely physical uh, interventions. Um, and we have to remember how we feel is rooted in biochemistry. Um, could you give us an example about, you know, how the, the, the anxiety was uh, affecting you? Um, how it was affecting me is pretty much in every walk of life. So even something as simple as a, a walk down the high street would fill me with some degree of trepidation. It's a general feeling that it's just not safe out there. And I'm not quite sure what I actually felt unsafe about. But I think just given early sort of childhood experiences, it makes me very mistrustful of people, um, mistrustful that life would look after me. Um, so, yeah, sort of something simple like going to the high street, public transport would be a real big difficulty for me. Going away on the holiday um, would you know, sadly sort of fill me with such fear um, rather than excitement. Um, meeting new people, standing in queues, something as simple as being in a queue in a, in a, in a supermarket. A panic would suddenly come on in me. Um, and that, that can make one feel quite sort of agoraphobic, really. Um, not, not wanting to go out as much as I should. So, so I've really limited my life to quite a severe degree over the years, um, of avoiding social situations, um, avoiding new experiences. So yes, yeah, so that's, that's been really limited, horrible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I can relate to that. I definitely had a lot of that early in life. I'm not sure if it was as bad, but I would also avoid stuff. I remember if I was walking down the street and someone else is walking towards me down the street, I would cross the, the other side of the street of the pavement to not have to, you know, uh, walk past that person just in case kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, I can relate to that. Um, so, and of course, if you are running on stress for such a long time or uh, sympathetic kind of dominant, as, as we talk about, um, where your stress system is kind of always on, it will tend to create other health challenges eventually. Um, do you mind talking about like some of the other things that you came to me, you know, wanting help with? Yeah, sure. Well, things like, um, skin issues. So I'd always had psoriasis on my hands and nails, um, digestive issues, and classic sort of irritable bowel syndrome, um, symptoms, uh, 
No, I've had to limit my diet so much over the years, cutting out dairy, caffeine, chocolate, alcohol, um, anything that's not just absolutely basic plain food would just irritate the hell out of me. And then there would be the brain fog that I'd experience, um, bladder issues at night, getting up three or four times in the night for a wee, disturbed sleep, uh, yeah, just really sort of fractured sleep, waking up many times in the night, um, often waking up in a sweat, um, so classic sort of anxiety. I'd always been underweight, so I'd always hovered at around 70 kilograms, and, and despite eating pretty huge quantities, I mean, people can't believe how much I ate. <laughs> it just sort of seemed to vanish. Um, yeah, um, fasting all the time. You know, I mean, literally, you know, I could, you know, I always joke about it, but I once set off a car alarm, fucking past the car. <laughs> so, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, it pains me to say a lot of this, you know, because I'm kind of looking at back at it now, kind of like it's, sort of feels like it's history. I cross my fingers on that one, but it's never felt so sure. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's kind of why I came to you. Yeah, thank you for sharing it, and that makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, I teach this on a lot of my, especially when I'm a guest on other people's podcasts, I talk a lot about, like, the basics, that when your adrenaline is high, and I definitely think that's one of the things that was going on for you, then you can kind of still function, you know, you're still a successful guy, you work and all the rest of it, but um, the areas that your body considers non-essential often suffer, like digestion, as you said, all these digestive issues, like being underweight, which I also suffered with most of my life, I can very much relate to that one. Um, and so, yeah, if you don't mind, uh, well, we'll edit this out if, you, if there's any aspect that you don't like, but um, certainly in terms of what I initially recommended, um, it was only like the first phase probably of what I was going to recommend. And one of the things I recommended was to uh, maybe have a medical intervention as well, which you haven't even been able to organize yet because of, you know, practicalities and stuff like that. Um, and so when I spoke to you, I was surprised at how much better things were already when we basically just got started. Um, and the two things that I saw in your genetics that we started working on initially uh, in relation to the anxiety were first of all that your body had an elevated need for glycine which is a specific uh, uh, both an amino acid but also it works as a neurotransmitter and it's a very calming neurotransmitter um, and then the second thing that i saw in your genetics is that you have a genetic tendency for low levels of dht and DHT is something I talk quite a lot about on this channel and in my work, but very few people are talking about at least the benefits of DHT. Um, but DHT is the primary male hormone, androgenic hormone, uh, that will um, stimulate GABA, which is your calming neurotransmitter again. So there are two very, to me, obvious areas there where we could increase your level of calm by by working on those two elements. And so we confirmed both of those things with testing, right? Uh, we're a big fan of uh, testing here at the Rejuvenate podcast. And so we saw that you had the genetic tendency, but then you actually, uh, you were willing, which I'm so glad about when people are, to do additional testing to confirm. And we did additional testing to confirm that you were low in glycine, because it was the amino acid you very much needed according to your NutriVal. And then we did additional testing to confirm that you were low on DHT. You're also not that low, but reasonably low on testosterone. Um, and so as a result of that, I recommended um, some basically just glycine, some also foods containing glycine. Um, uh, I think there was vitamin B1 as well, which is uh, can be a very effective uh, vitamin for reducing stress and anxiety if it's something that you need then again your genetics and then your neutral indicate that you're needing it um, and then several herbs to uh, boost uh, DHT and testosterone and so that's basically you can tell me if I've forgotten anything there Andy uh, oh yeah there was also L-theanine for um, increasing GABA as well because I could see that you uh, you know you benefit from that and there was um, just here 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Glutathione was a little bit of a like on a little bit of a different subject. That's because it showed as being necessary in your um, Nutrival that you had low levels of glutathione, and this made sense, as you said, given you know the how long you've been struggling with this. Um, but you know the other interesting thing was anyone who saw your normal medical test, because you know we did a normal medical test as well, would basically look at all of that and say there's nothing wrong with you, right? And you probably had that experience before going to medical doctors who tested you and you actually had pretty excellent health for someone of your age, if you don't mind me saying, which is 59. Uh, but obviously you're still struggling in these key areas. And I don't think any medical doctor would occur to them to test for DHT, let alone give you uh, natural substances to increase it. And it wouldn't occur to them <laughs> to test for glycine and, and just recommend natural foods and, and a supplement to increase it. Um, but yeah, so, that's the, that's the, the, the only recommendations you've done so far. Um, you know, we're, we're going to work on maybe a couple of other things to optimize, but yeah, please tell us about, uh, the results that you've had so far, knowing that we're not finished. Well, the big one is the anxiety. I, I, I would say that I feel about 85% better, possibly even more. Um, I've done well, I've actually been to three concerts over the last month. You know, I haven't been to a concert for many, many years. And I'm I'm sure all anxiety um sufferers will relate to this. That getting on a train is one thing, and going through the underground is one thing. That can be provoking. It's absolutely fine on that. But when your worst nightmare is a train stopping in the tunnel for some sort of fault or you know, it's what happened to me the other night. So the train sat there for 10, 15 minutes. Normally I would have been climbing up the wall with that. I didn't even realize that I got off the train and I hadn't experienced even the thought of anxiety. I'm sorry. And it, you know, I had to kick myself and go, what the hell? What just happened? You know, and they're sitting in the concert, actually being present and enjoying the music rather than managing my own internal dialogue. You know, it's just, I mean, it's, just, I mean, it's a biggie. Yeah, so. It's fantastic. I mean, on a more profound level, uh, you know, not living your life ruled by fear is arguably the most important thing in life. I mean, not living a life ruled by pain, I guess it would be another one, but these are like fundamental things that absolutely ruin the quality of life in my experience. And I think in the experience of, you know, the majority of people watching. So uh, absolutely, I, I'd say that is a profound shift. Yeah, there is no life. You know, when you're suffering to that degree, it, you're just existing really and, and not taking anything in. Um, so that, that would be a big one. Um, my skin, my nails are all getting better. Digestion is is you know it's heading in the right direction as long as I stick to a pretty strict diet then everything's okay. The the farting's pretty much disappeared now. Um, that's I mean that's a that's fantastic. Um, so my weight um, I said before I've kind of hovered around seventy kilograms all my life. I'm up to nearly seventy five kilograms. Um, it doesn't look like it physically. I, I have to sort of look at the scales a couple of times. Really? You know, because but then I look in the mirror and sort of think, well, actually, you know, I look a bit beefy. <laughs> um, but that, I mean, that's fantastic. I'm not... I think, and it's only been two or three months, right? So, yes, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I would expect that maybe six months, 12 months, something like that, you probably go more to a, you know, a weight that you consider to be totally optimal. Yeah, yeah. So I'll have to keep that in check, I guess, at some point. Um, so my bladder, you know, I've never been diagnosed with prostate uh, problems at all, but I was getting up many times in the night. Um, most nights I'm going without a wee in the night. I get through to about five in the morning and then get up for, for one wee, which, which I'm going to bed at half nine in the evening. So that's a pretty good stretch. Um, qual my quality of sleep is significantly better. I, I analyze it on my sort of Apple watch and, and the amount of time I spend in REM and deep sleep is, is much, much better now. 
Yeah, and the one thing I'd be slightly embarrassed to sort of say is that I think my penis is bigger. You know, it's, it's yet to be confirmed by a second party. <laughs> but again, when I look at myself in the mirror, I think, oh, you know, something's changed there. So, yeah, bring it on. Thank you for sharing. I mean, very interesting. Um, again, you know, most people go, you know, that's not possible or whatever, but the main thing that causes the penis to grow is the hormone DHT. So, uh, if that's your experience, um, it wouldn't be surprising because, you know, just to explain, uh, Andy, actually just like myself, uh, we both have a genetically, a tendency genetically to have low DHT. So what that means is, um, even if you're doing everything right and you're living optimally and all the rest of it and, uh, you know, following all the lifestyle and dietary advice that all the gurus say will make you well, you're still never going to have optimal levels of a hormone if genetically you have a tendency for it to be too low or too high, because that's just the genetic tendency. Um, so with some of the interventions that we recommended for you, uh, they will have increased your DHT. And could that have that effect? Yes. As you say, we, we you know, we haven't had this independently <laughs> tested or verified, um, but, uh, but it wouldn't be that surprising. Uh, admittedly, at my age or your age, it is unusual, but if anything could do it, it would be DHT. So definitely possible. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, well, that's fantastic. And as, what I wanted to, you know, you've talked about benefits, lots of area. Oh, what about brain fog? You mentioned uh, yeah, yeah. that earlier. Yeah. Glad you mentioned it. Gone completely. I mean, yeah. First yeah. 40 years of brain fog and not being able to focus and concentrate not being able to absorb information. It's, it's, it's gold. It's absolutely it's amazing. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it kind of is. Um, and so I would say the important thing to emphasize here, first of all, obviously that no matter how much you might have struggled, how long you may have struggled with anxiety, no matter how many things you may have tried, and I know you tried a lot of stuff, Andy. Um, you also what's the word, uh, you were able to afford to try a lot of different things. So you've done a lot of things that maybe a lot of people weren't able to afford. Uh, you know, you've traveled to different places, you've taken, you know, time doing different, as you said, retreats and therapies and all the rest of it. Um, and I'm not against any of that kind of stuff. And if that helps someone, then fantastic. But, uh, and I, I did, I don't anymore, but I did see a therapist for a while and it, I think it was helpful. But one of the things I remember I used to say to that therapist often is I think, all of these issues that you help people with, they're more down to biochemistry than they're down to, you know, psychology. Like they're more down to the, um, the, yeah, the chemistry than the wiring of the brain. I think that's what a therapist helps with, like rewiring and helping you to, you know, think in new ways and use new neuronal pathways and all the rest of it. A good therapist or a good therapy anyway. Um, and all of that is good. But if the fundamental issue is just that your whole biochemistry is overstimulated or maybe a better way to put it in your case would be um under calmed like you just didn't have enough of the hormone and neurotransmitters that would calm you down then all the talking and or other interventions body-based therapies as you say like psychedelic therapies you know retreats spiritual practices meditation breath work all of that kind of stuff i know that you've done uh it none of it gets to the root issue because the root issue is that you're actually deficient in something because of a genetic basis that none of those things will address. As you say, they will maybe temporarily make it better because maybe if you do one of these things and it temporarily raises GABA or it temporarily raises oxytocin because you feel connected to everyone or something like that. But the problem is as soon as the effects have worn off, you'll go right back again. It hasn't addressed the root issue. So that's one thing is to give hope to those who have been suffering as long. And the other thing um, is just to point out that so far, and you know, we're going to do more until you're really 100% optimized everything. Um, but so far, we really only worked with the anxiety. You mentioned, you know, the glutathione as well, and okay, the B1 has other benefits. But the fundamental thing with everything that um, I had you try so far was all really just to address that therapy. Uh, sorry, uh, just to address that anxiety issue, even the, um, you know, the testosterone and DHT, I know it has lots of other benefits, but that was the, the fundamental thing that we're going for. 
And it's interesting that it's had so many, as you say, knock-on effects in all kinds of other areas that maybe most people wouldn't make that connection. But as you're seeing, it is all connected, right? As soon as your body goes out of that fight or flight stress state, um, basically because you've lived a relatively healthy lifestyle compared to most people, maybe because you had to, right? As you said, no smoking, no drinking, all the rest of it. Um, your body is in a position that it can fix everything itself if you, if you just get out of stress state to a large degree. And so, and that's great. I have to say, you know, I'm not allowed to say that I cure any disease or anything, and I'm not. All, all we did in this case is just give your body some support and it's curing itself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I would say is that, you know, I don't regret any of the work that I've done, you know, to get to the place I am now. It's, it's all been worthwhile. It's all been valid. It's been beautiful experiences along the way. But I think one has to be careful that uh, some, some of the things that I've done, I think, have re re-traumatized the system and perpetuated some of the imbalances that I've had internally. So it really does need a careful discernment of, what is actually good for me and what is bad for me um but yeah that you know get a genetic test done and, and just see what's going on uh, cause you could, for me you could go through a lifetime and not know about this you know and it can just be some simple imbalances that could really help and uh you know you were happy to do additional testing like blood testing and urine testing how helpful would you say it was to kind of see it on the genetics, but then have it confirmed independently by another lab test. Do you think you would have been, you would have stuck to it as religiously if you hadn't have had that confirmation, if you'd only had me say it's in your genetics? And I, I don't know the answer to this question. I'm just curious. I have a lot of trust in you anyway, even without those um, blood tests, but it was very useful to have that confirmed. Um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, definitely. Some of the blood tests aren't cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than another, another 10 years of therapy. So <laughs> that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Can you put a finger on it? I don't know. Like if for me, I can say, um, I spent hundreds of thousands on my well being before I found this stuff, which has really transformed my life for the last two years. Very similar to, you know, what you started doing now. Uh, do you have any idea how much you spent before you found this, uh, avenue? Well, I did once work out that the psychotherapy was about 250,000. Um, and then if I add up everything around it, I think it's maybe 400 grand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Probably quite similar then. Yeah. And I'm not a particularly, not a poor man. I'm not a hugely wealthy man, but I kind of just, because my life was so limited, I, I really didn't mind prioritizing that rather than having a, a Ferrari or a, you know, a whatever, you know, I just, I just, yeah. I just knew what my value in life was, was to, to really live with presence and contentment and peace. Yeah. And it was the right thing to do. We're not making fun of either of us having spent that much money. I mean, what do, what do a lot of people do? They spend it, you know, uh, getting drunk and taking drugs to try and escape the pain. Right. So obviously doing therapy is way, way better than, you know, what the average uh, really was the best possible solution that you had available to you, right? Just like it was for me. So yeah, it was the wise thing to do. Um, but, and as you said, I don't regret doing it. You don't regret doing it because you, you learn a lot, as you say. Um, but if there's one thing I do regret, uh, and I won't speak for you, you can tell me if you feel the same, but one thing I do regret is I wish I'd have uh, learned about this genetic testing earlier and, you know, done it, I, I think I could have saved myself a lot of suffering. And uh, that's actually why I started Genetic Insights. Uh, and, you know, that's why I'm promoting it far and wide as much as I can, just because, um, you know, if if uh, if I'd have had this insight earlier, I yeah, I could have spared myself a huge amount of suffering. Well, what I would say is so that um, I did do a genetics test many years ago, I think, and that was from a hair analysis. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't have anywhere near the sort of level of um, results that your test comes up with. Um, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I get it. Yeah, not all genetic tests are created equal. I think some of them, they don't give that much information. They're not really that helpful. I've seen, 
you know, some of the, because um, I did a lot of research once I decided to actually launch this company, I tried a lot of people's services. A lot of people, they give way less information than us. I did come across a couple of companies that gave kind of an equal amount of information, like a very broad selection like we do, um, but they were completely inaccurate and I was actually shocked um, about that. So I wouldn't claim that we're the only company because uh, th there are several other companies that do do, uh, th that have the same AI engine behind them that we do. Um, so out of those, we are um, the simplest and the most affordable. That was really my goal. But as I said, most other companies out there, yeah, the results they give are very, um, what's the word, elementary and basic compared to what we can provide. Well, I think what was important was the, the availability to have a consultation with yourself afterwards because... I think if I just looked at a genetic test myself, it would have made no sense to me. But but having yourself piece together, or that's causing this and that's causing that, and to to have your um, knowledge to make sense of those uh, genetic tests was was absolutely crucial. So yeah, definitely definitely follow up consultation is is really needed. Thank you. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be able to keep doing them with, you know, as demand steadily increases, uh, but maybe I can train someone else. And that's part of my goal as well is to create more and more educational videos, kind of showing people how to go through them and how to interpret them so that over time, you know, either people can do it for themselves or maybe, as I said, maybe I train other people who, who get it enough that they can then help people in turn. But yeah, for now, as the time of this coming out, I'm still available for consultations. I love doing it. It's, it's my favorite thing to do is to go through people's genetics. I find it fascinating. I find it interesting. Obviously, it's very rewarding um, when it helps people, uh, which it you know usually does. Honestly, often I don't uh, hear much from the people unless I follow up because often I'm saying, like, you have a medical issue, you gotta go to this doctor, and then they, they start working more with the doctor than myself. And so sometimes I hear from the doctor that they're doing better. <laughs> so it's very nice to... Uh, uh, you know, that you keep uh, coming back. I don't know, we've only had two consoles so far, but, you know, that you plan to keep coming back. So I'll keep uh, hearing about your progress, hopefully. That's great. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep it up. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much, Andy. I really appreciate your time, but I think more importantly, your courage. Um, you know, it's very ironic that uh, this is the first one of these we're doing. Hopefully we'll do more, you know, at least a... I don't know, half a dozen more by the end of the year. But it's very ironic. The first one I do is for someone who has suffered with crippling anxiety. Um, and it's just a testament to, I guess, both your courage and your desire to help people. Uh, but I guess to some degree, proof as well, the anxiety must be less that you're happy to, to do this in a public forum. Um, <laughs> and so, I, uh, yeah, but, you know, I think no matter how little anxiety you have, you still have to have a desire to help people and courage to put yourself out there. Uh, in a public way. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, well, my pleasure. Well, I'm uh, only too happy. Genetic Insights provides cutting edge, affordable DNA testing, giving you access to over 500 health reports that can help you in three key ways. They may be able to resolve your existing health challenges, even when nothing else has worked. Using simple lifestyle changes, their reports can help you reduce your risk of developing future health challenges that you may be genetically predisposed to and they can help you feel more confident in your health by showing you where you are genetically strong. Unlike most other genetic health testing companies, Genetic Insights tests over 83 million different variations in your genes, guaranteeing 99.7% accuracy across all of their DNA reports. They cover almost every aspect of health, including digestive issues, cardiovascular health, weight loss, hormonal and blood sugar balance, as well as nutrient needs, allergies and intolerances, and so much more. Using their system is quick and easy and reading the reports is simple. If you've done an Ancestry DNA test, you can simply download your raw DNA data, upload it to the Genetic Insights platform, and within a few hours you will have access to genetic reports which give you a risk score for each specific issue and scientifically validated recommendations based on your individual genetic profile. Everything in your reports are based on scientific studies and there are citation links throughout every report. If you are serious about optimizing your health and wellness and feeling great, then getting access to your Genetic Insights reports may be the most important health investment you will ever make. In the reports, not only will you gain insights into how to overcome existing health challenges and avoid future issues, 
You'll also discover which types of dietary, lifestyle, and even supplement protocols are best for your unique genetics. To get your unique genetic health reports, go to geneticinsights.co and use code rejuvenate to get 20% off today. That's geneticinsights.co using coupon code rejuvenate to get 20% off today. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed that, I recommend watching our latest episode, which you can do by clicking above. And make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment, and share with anyone who you think might appreciate it. Thank you.